virtual taping of Miked Up Sports, the show that goes in depth with the people who build our sports community. When we started this talk show series, we had a focus on Twin Cities sports personalities, but then COVID-19 came in and threw the rule book out the window. And if a virus can throw the rule book out the window, why can't we? So joining us all the way from Merrillville, Indiana, is Victoria Coco Gaines, who just finished up her college career in the green and white of Michigan State. Coco, thanks for joining us. And uh, what do you make of being a former college athlete now? <laughs> well, hi, everyone, and thank you, Mike, for having me on your show. Um, so the life after college sports, it's very interesting, like I was telling Mike earlier, very interesting, emotional in a way, because you've been tied to sports for so long that you had to figure out at an older age where um, more people around your age kind of know where their path is. So right now I'm finally getting to some more path than I was um, in the past. And, you know, I, I give credit to me hurting myself earlier in the season because I had to start that path earlier as a senior on the team. So I kind of got in a, an advantage in a way, at least that's how I look at it because I try to think positive about things. Um, that that pretty much helped me get my life together quicker than than I would have. And um, like I said, it's very emotional and very, I would say fun. So, you know, it's very interesting, like I said. It's interesting that you say you know, your injuries helped you grow up quicker and not that you wish for an injury, but the way you look at it as a positive, I know you've dealt with some knee injuries throughout your college career and then uh, one, I believe, that ended it your last season prematurely. But you know, a lot of folks, when that happens, it's a very deflating experience. And here you are saying, mm -hmm. ah, it helped me grow up quicker. So <laughs> it's a very yeah. unusual take, but I see you've found a way to get a positive out of it. Yeah, you know, it, it took time to get my mindset like that. I had to rewire, rewire my brain in a way. Um, but I hurt myself at a young age. I was 14. So it started then, and after that, you know, injury after injury, I sat out more. I got to talk to more adults instead of, like, my peers. So, you know, I gained more knowledge in a way and more wisdom, I would say. Um, and it just helped me not as a player, not only as a player, but, like, as an individual outside of sports, too. And, um, you know, I after thinking that for so many – so many times I just started to think positive about things and it, it took me until my junior year in college to get that way so you know it took years but finally there well I think on your Twitter bio it says positive vibes only and so <laughs> I guess you better back yourself up right <laughs> that's true that's true I'm definitely a vibes person energy is definitely something that I pay attention to now, that being said, you did have a lot of success in the sport of basketball and a lot of fun memories. And, you know, we'll talk about that as well. Now, of course, uh, Coco is your nickname. Yes. And I remember you told me this. So have, if you're OK with it, how did you get that nickname? Because, you know, I see Victoria when your name shows up on YouTube or Google. But, you know, you go by Coco. And so uh what was the birth of that alter ego of yours? Okay, well, first and foremost, I want everyone to know I love my name. It's just Coco just fits me more. Um, so I got my name when I was in preschool. And around that time, I was probably like, it was only four black kids at that school. So me being the darkest, um, I used to get picked on, bullied, whatever you want to call it. And I remember coming home one day and I don't know the real story because it happened so long ago and I don't remember this memory, but it's two stories. So I'm going to give two of them. Um, I came home one day after preschool and crying to my mom and we just ended up making all this chocolate dessert. And then she said, I told her I'm changing my name to Coco Chocolate Marie. 
So that's one story. <laughs> the second one is my aunt, my mother's my um sister. She would always just call me um Coco because I'm dark skinned. So that's the other story. But I go with the first one because it's just more interesting. So I don't know. <laughs> so viewers out there, if you want to pick which story you think is more accurate, uh, just vote on our YouTube page. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Over time, you know, how did you embrace it? Because, you know, obviously you're fine with it being called Coco, but Mm -hmm. Going through that experience in preschool early on, getting picked on because of your skin color, how did that just shape your world view, if that makes sense? Um, well, obviously, that's when I learned about racial, you know, all that racial discrimination, all that. Um, so, yeah, I learned that at an early age. And, you know, you could look at it in a bad way and look at it in a in a good way and I kind of tie it in the middle and that is just knowing your surroundings first off and like just embracing just embracing your skin embracing you I would say and it like I just like me thinking positive it took me a long time to be um okay with my skin color just because you know um even when I got to a predominantly black school, I would still get picked on. I wouldn't say picked on, but you know, I would get um, called names about my skin color. But at that point, it was like a ha ha. Okay, like I already, I already got this before. Like it, it doesn't matter to me. But um, yeah, I started to embrace it after a while. And me being tall, it was pretty hard too. But you know, I God made me who I am for a reason. And, no, I'm going to find that purpose. But um, yeah, so I just know I, I really want to be an inspiration to the, the girls that look like me because because I, I know how tough it is. And, you know, I know Nia knows how tough it is. And a lot of other girls that's on the team um, that's dark skin like me know have the same similar story. So um, just being an inspiration and, and you know, it's, it's it's people out there, but our platform, how our platform is, I think I have a good opportunity to do that. And that platform really came into focus, as you mentioned, going to school and discovering that passion of basketball, which has taken you to quite a few places. So do you remember when you got that first itch to play the sport? Um, yeah, I was young. Um, so I would be over my grandparents' house with some more of my other cousins, and I was more of the cheerleader, the dancer, but I, I would still play with them, my um, other cousins, and it was, it was fun to play. I was good at it, so I would play, and it was fun to play with my cousins, and that's really how I learned how to play basketball, by just playing it and watching my um, older cousins, and um, and my grandma just started to see how tall I was getting and referred me to play basketball. And that's really how it started. But if it was up to me at that age, I would have been a cheerleader <laughs> or a dancer. So um, it worked out for the best, though. And, you know, um, that's really how it started, just like that. I'm just thinking how different your career would have been you know, if you went to cheerleading. I don't know if you would have gone to Michigan State, but it's like you could have been at the Final Four uh, cheering on Cassius Winston uh, <laughs> and your buckies yeah. over there. I tease, of course, but it's fun to think about because of where you went. Yeah, but if like my grandma at the time, she was a, she's a dance choreographer too, so I don't know why I wasn't in dance, but I still dance. That's why I dance all the time. So that's how I get everything out. <laughs> So would you consider yourself the best dancer on the Michigan State women's team over the last few years? Um, yeah, I had some competition. I definitely had some competition. And it's some people that are on the team now that can dance, but they're pretty shy. So <laughs> I don't want to say I'm the best. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I, I appreciate your little modesty there. I think you'd have a run <laughs> in a dance off. Uh, <laughs> what did you enjoy most about playing the sport as you, you embraced it? You mentioned your cousins helped you get into it. Your grandmother said, Hey, you're tall. You should try this out. And as you started <laughs> to develop your skills, uh, what did you find fun about playing basketball? Um, uh, man, just the memories are great. And, um, so yeah, I started basketball at a young age and I remember it was my second basketball coach ever. And he had just the perfect team. We clicked like that. And I just remember he started the AAU team and the girls that I've been playing with since then I've played with since high school and you know we were sisters at that point we we knew where we were going to be on the court without even looking it was one of those you know to telepathy or I don't know great connection so um just the passion to play with my sisters it was amazing it was fun it was it was a it was just a great atmosphere and you know, that that made me love the game was to be around the people that I love. And of course, as you were growing up, you have both the NBA, WNBA, and I'm sure you watched a lot of games. Were there any uh, players you were hoping you could be the next version of as you were oh. growing up? Yeah, I used to be in love with Lisa Leslie just because, you know, she's tall, dark skinned, and, you know, <laughs> why not? Um but yeah, Lisa Leslie was um, definitely my first one. And then Elena Deladon, my second. I just love those two. Because um, I used to refer to Elena Deladon as Lady KD. And I used to, you know, think of myself as Lady KD. That's what they used to call me in high school sometimes as a joke. And, um, you know, um, it was one of those, those were the, that those two were me. That's how I felt about them. Now, did you try to dunk it all in your career? Because Lisa was the first to throw one down in the WNBA. So was that something you practiced? Um, honestly, I didn't. I never got the chance to just because, you know, my knee. But I remember my freshman year in high school, I could probably get like a one-two and just jump up and tip the um, the rim. So... It was, you know, I probably could have potentially, but didn't get the chance to. I can on the eight foot rim, maybe not now, but back then. <laughs> yes, and well, it just seems like eons ago where every everything does these days. But when conversations come up, you mentioned the eight foot rim about if they should lower the rims or not. I'm one of those thinking like you'd have to do it universally because everyone's been trained to shoot for a 10 foot rim. So I don't know if you thought one way or the other about lowering the rims, but it, it just seems so weird to talk about. And at the same time, like you said, if the rims were a little shorter, you could uh, posterize some people. Yeah, I, you know, I used to think that. I used to think that they should lower the rims, but the way that the, these kids are growing up is like they're growing so tall and they're so athletic now. Um, the girls are able to dunk at an early age now. So it's like, okay, we, we see the growth of how our bodies are changing over the decades. And I think that the 10 foot rim in the future is going to be the great, good size. So I feel like they should just leave it at where it is because so many people are used to it. It'll be a hard change. And that was my take when that was a thing. Because, you know, while dunking looks nice, it, it's only one element, you know, to the men's or women's game for those who can. And if you just focus on that, well, then you leave out all the other elements, the strategy, mm -hmm. the athleticism involved. So, yeah. I think it's, I think it's more neat for high schoolers to high school basketball to get more or shot clocks. That's what we need to focus on now. Before I know several, yeah, yeah, several states have put in a shot clock. I think Wisconsin is going to add one oh, whenever really? we can play again. Minnesota is still on the fence about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing when you played in Indiana, they didn't have a shot clock. I think they, no. you played with quarters too, if I recall. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And that's another interesting thing because uh, you're growing up in Indiana. I mean, it's just a time difference. And I don't know how many teams you played out of state, but you watch a game up here in Minnesota. We've been playing with halves for over a decade now. Wow. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. 18 minute halves. So not only are there two periods compared to four, but high school athletes play four extra minutes in huh. total, 32 I didn't, to 36. Yeah. I didn't know how big of a deal basketball was in Minnesota until Nia got here. Um, so <laughs> seriously, you missed out. Because, you, know, you missed out, Coco. Seriously. Man, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, <laughs> you know, Indiana is supposedly the basketball state, so we're like, okay, we have all the gyms. We we make up the rules. We think it's the same everywhere. That being said, one of my favorite gyms happens to be in Indiana. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we would have crossed paths then, but I covered the WNBA finals a couple of years when it was the Lynx and the Indiana Fever, so I got to go to Banker's Life and uh, cool venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm crazy enough, I'm not a Pacers fan, but – I live two hours from Indianapolis, so I'm closer to Chicago. So I'm Chicago Bulls fan, Chicago fan, period. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I was curious about that because kind of like how Western Wisconsin, we sort of uh, absorb into our sports culture. As you mentioned, you're closer to Chicago. You know, Northwest Indiana has a lot of folks who maybe work there or go up mm. there. So, so were you just an all Chicago fan or did you have some? Indiana allegiance? Um, yeah, not only if the Chicago teams are out, then Indiana is second. If I'm supporting a, another team, I guess. Eh, actually, I don't really know. I just know I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, Chicago Bears. I don't really watch football, but they're Chicago, so. Yeah. So one day when the Bulls come back into form – I take it, you know, the last dance oh, you've been yeah. eating that up. Oh, yes. I'm going to wear my my jacket, my boy's jacket on Sunday, and I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense. Although uh, for those Pacers-Bulls rivalry as well, especially in the 90s or so, and even now, you know, that has to be – I have to imagine there's some smack talk that goes on maybe with you and your folks because of the yeah. – uh, uh yeah i know distance. i know <laughs> um you know sydney dodd a freshman well tech, sophomore now um she's from indianapolis so me and her always butt heads about who's the better team or who's the better people where we live so <laughs> it's pretty funny it's that and aaron henry on the men's team he's from indianapolis so it's like i don't know is this kind of rivalry from indianapolis and we call ourselves the region we're outside of um, the border of Indiana, Illinois. Um, but we always show, we always have each other's back when it comes to other states, if that makes sense. So it's pretty funny how our relationship is. You went to Merrillville High School and ended up 23rd on the ESPN Hoop Girls list when you were a senior. Do you remember suiting up for your first high school game when that was and just maybe how nervous you were because once you get into high school, that's when a lot of people can <laughs> take it seriously. Um, yes. I remember that memory clear as day. Okay. This first game ever, it's an away game. And I forget my warm up pants. So I have to get another set of warm-up pants from one of the JV players that were suiting up with, for, with varsity. And she was a point guard. <laughs> so those pants were pretty small. And um, I just remember I was so nervous. And everybody was like, Coco, you couldn't, how did you forget your pants? And I'm just so nervous because this is my first game. Everybody's just like on, on my case, I feel like. And I just remember running out, doing our warm-ups, just so nervous, shaking, missing layups because I'm so nervous. Um, and then when the ball tips up, I don't know. I've been doing this since I was little. 
it just seems like everybody is gone and it's just us on the court so that that was that first game was my career high with 25 points and after that um I just knew like what was the point of scoring what was the point of scoring like that anymore like I, I got my respect. <laughs> so that's when, um, you know, we, we had a good team my my freshman year. So I didn't really have to score like that all any of my years in high school. But it was just fun playing with my family and friends. I take it after that first game, you never forgot your pants. Oh, yeah, no, never. <laughs> never, never, never. Until this day, till this day, I make sure I double check everything because I'm so nervous I'm going to forget something. Now, what you said, you scored your career high in your first varsity game and mm -hmm. then said, yeah, I got my respect now. Because up here, I see a lot of kids that will go for 30, 40. I've seen a 50-point game once, and we had a kid score 63 in a game a couple of seasons ago, which had never happened before in Minnesota. So you get folks mm -hmm. that are you know, eyeing scoring records and will want to – really rack up the points. So for you, it's an interesting approach to the game. So what led you not to say you weren't going to score, but to take this approach of, oh, I got 25 points, I got my respect, so I'm not going to worry about putting up 30 every night. Right. Okay. So um my second my second coach that I talked about earlier, um we were like a family and played with my sisters. We just, we practiced on every little fundamental. It didn't matter if you were tall, short, you were going to learn how to post up. You were going to learn how to dribble. You were going to learn how to pass. So um, that being said, it helped me throughout my years in basketball, just because I knew how to pass as a tall person. I knew how to dribble as a tall person. So I had an advantage in that. And I used it, um, you know, people were so focused on me. It was like, okay, I know how, how good my sister is because I've been playing with her. Now I'm going to pass into her and let her do her thing. And that started at an early age, um, <laughs> even in middle school. Um, and I, I'm the type of player that likes assists more than scoring. So just because I'm, I'm more of a giver. So that's how I see myself. Like, I'm, I can give you points if you want that, but I can also give you assists if you want that. It really depends on the game. And since I said my freshman year, our, our team was really good, it was really no need for me to give points when I could do both, but contribute more with everybody scoring around, around me because it's just going to make us look better as a team, as a family unit. So I'm thinking you were like uh... – high school Candace Parker if you will or you know the stretch fours we call them now just post players I presume you played a lot of post mm -hmm. if I'm wrong let me know but post players you know back in the day they were just back to the rim post up now it's okay they can move the ball set up the offense like you did I see you got four assists per game as a high school player and mm -hmm. I'd say that's pretty good recognition <laughs> floor awareness you know at yeah as a freshman to realize hey you know, I can use myself as a decoy <laughs> um yeah um freshman year was probably my best year just because I was playing with my cousin she was a senior and I was a freshman and she was the one I was playing with that taught me basketball so we our connection was always there um so it was just I didn't really need to do anything seriously my freshman year because I knew I was going to give you points. I knew I was going to give you rebounds. And as as a freshman, nobody knows you, so that's another advantage. Um, sophomore, junior, senior year was were different because my my role became different since I hurt myself my freshman year. And so I was coping through that my sophomore year a little bit, and then I started to get the groove. Um, but I also started passing more because I was scared to to drive how I used to because, you know, it was my first injury. I didn't really feel normal. I still don't. And um, so my sophomore year, I, was, I became more of a passer. And then junior year, um, it was very weird. It was like a roller coaster my junior year. 
just because I, you know, it was hard for me to find a passion of basketball again because um, my best friends, they graduated they, my soft, or yeah, my sophomore year. So after that, it didn't feel right on the team. It just something didn't click. So my junior and senior year, it was kind of, mm, it was up and down, but my senior year, I, I made it the best I could. And um, that's when I became more of a passer because like that's, I already signed to, to Michigan State. I'm not about to try really hard going to the basket. And I, I tore my knee that summer too, going into my senior year, my other knee. And um, so I really wasn't about to drive to the basket and do anything that I usually did in my um, earlier years. And I ended up beating my, my cousin in the assist record, but she, she still called me in the, in the points record, but it's all cool, whatever. We're in competition with that. So I can see those family reunions down the road. <laughs> You've got the assist record. She has the scoring record. And yeah. who made who, I guess, in a way, because I take it uh, some of her points were thanks to your passing. Yeah. That's true. So, so you've got that in your pocket. <laughs> eh. <laughs> ah. But she got me on that one. But it, it's so funny because we don't even talk about it, actually. We don't talk about it at all. But, um, yeah, um, you know, whatever. It's funny because she's a point guard, so it's funny that I beat her in my fifth record. So – Positionless basketball, we can thank you for that if that ever becomes a thing. <laughs> you break right. your cousins. You're, you have more assists than your cousin who played point guard. So, <laughs> But, hey, again, though, you, there, you've you got to have a high degree of awareness to pull off assists or, like that. So yeah. give yourself some credit. Uh, I try. <laughs> now, you had said nobody knew who you were in your freshman year, and, of course, uh, uh, some folks figured out who you were because you went to Michigan State, you know, a Power Five D one school. Uh, do you remember the first offer you got from a college, and when it hit you that you, know, you would have an opportunity to play beyond high school? Um, yeah, I was in. I think I was going into my eighth grade year. Um, so I used to be a track. I used to love track. I was track, 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 all of track. But once I've got that letter. I seen that I had more potential going towards the basketball path instead of the track path. And, um, like, it, it worked out, obviously. And um, I was just stunned. I remember I had to pick, like, which sport I was going to choose to be serious about. And I remember talking to my parents about it. Um, but I still wanted to play more sports in high school just so I don't overuse my muscles. and you know, playing one sport. Um, but basketball was always my my main sport. So that started in eighth grade. And after that, I was just like, set, okay, this is what I'm going to do now. And how many offers did you receive until oh. you committed to Michigan State? Oh, man. I don't even know. I don't even remember. I don't even know if we even have the bag still. I don't know what, what my dad did with it, but um, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot, especially since our AAU team was good. We, we've been playing with each other since eighth grade year, actually all the way up to going into our senior year, the last year of basketball, even though we were all committed, we all just wanted to win in Nike National. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't get to play my last year at AAU either, which is ironic. It, it's interesting because of all the conversations around it, you know, being a multi-sport athlete, so you wouldn't overexert yourself. Uh, you were in track, and I also understand you played volleyball mm -hmm. in your time in high school. So uh, what did you enjoy most about those other sports, and how did that help you – recharge from you know the grind of basketball um well long story short I didn't run track in bat or yeah I didn't run track in high school all of my years I stopped actually in middle school but I used to run track like how AAU was in basketball I used to do the do that for track um 
so yeah and I had a bad experience in in middle school which kind of just made me fall out of love with the sport of track and you know there's coaches out there that do that and I don't want to be one of those coaches so I'm just you know I learned that at an early age da 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 um but for volleyball I was actually walking into orientation for middle school and this teacher seen me how tall I was and said oh you better you better be trying out for the volleyball <laughs> and I was like whoa okay I, I've never played volleyball but um that started in seventh grade and it was fun you know sports was fun back then even if you were innocent <laughs> um it wasn't how it did how it is it, businesses now but um it was fun to do and you know I got to high school you know I'm pretty good at it and I'm tall I can block shots you know and I also figured out like this this is going to help me build connections and get outside of making friends outside of basketball you know all this good stuff that comes with playing another sport um but I ended up tearing something in my shoulder like a, a my labrum I never got that fixed I just got the you know cortisone shot um so I didn't play volleyball my senior year or going into my senior year but I was working out still I don't remember actually but it was it was just a fun experience volleyball was a fun experience so I just did basketball and volleyball in high school okay well we got the full story now and <laughs> what would you say was your favorite moment in high school and I guess you touched on you know forgetting your warm-up pants are there any other embarrassing moments that you had to work your way through as a high school player uh, <laughs> yes I was so skinny so skinny and tall um they used to call me a stallion um just because I ran the way I ran, it was, it was actually very funny. Um, so I, I was clumsy too. So me falling was like a stick falling and it was, I would fall every game. So it was pretty, pretty hilarious throughout my freshman year. And uh, what were some of your favorite moments as a high school player? Um, it's so many moments, but just honestly, I know it can sound cliche, but it just all the memories that when I play with my sisters, just because I played with them for so long, they're just all great throughout the whole high school career. And, you know, that those people were, you know, what made me who I am today in a way. So it's just great memories all around. So what led you to Michigan State and how many schools were you considering uh, when you settled on a trip to East Lansing? Okay, so um, again, my cousin, she was getting recruited at the time and I was in seventh grade. So I went, I went with her on her visit. And so I've seen Michigan State since seventh grade. Um, and then I got my letter from them my next year. And they were actually the first school to offer me a scholarship. So even through all of the um, injuries, sorry, my cat's in the way. <laughs> even throughout the injuries that I received, uh, Michigan State was always there. And it showed loyalty and loyalty is really big to me and for me. So um, I liked that and even, the atmosphere there every time I went it was like a family atmosphere and I know a lot of people say that but it, it's actually true and I just I just had a feeling like okay this is it I'm, I'm comfortable I feel comfortable this is it so that's how I got here <laughs> I mean there are other schools but a lot of them went away after I heard it myself too and it sounds like Michigan State stuck with it and said, you know, yes, we're aware of, you know, your knees and, but, mm -hmm. you know, they, Susie must have seen something in you to stay the course. Right. So, yeah, I, I really respect her as a person for that. And, you know, it was hard for me to see, you know, how good of a player I could have been before I got hurt. And that's the mindset that I had 
Um, but Michigan State, like being here in Michigan State, or there, I should say, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it helped me just get awareness of who I was. And so it was pretty good. You know, it worked out for the best. I would say so. I'm not going to dispute that, uh, even if my reasons <laughs> are biased for it. That being said, so Michigan State, you know, if it, Michigan State, I guess, in a way, is how I met you because one of my good friends, uh, your good friend, Nia mm-hmm. Holly, you've mentioned her already, yeah. went to Michigan State. So do you remember the first time I'm, uh, you got a chance to meet Nia? And what was it? with Nia Holly, because <laughs> I remember there are two Nias, I almost forgot, Nia Clouton as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. So what was it about Nia Holly where the two of you um, connected as well as you did? Um, okay, so I'm going to start when she was on her visit. So she was on her visit, and um, I didn't really get a chance to talk to her because she sat on the other side of the table. Um, but I just remember talking to her once she committed here and was actually here. And we connected. She said that I looked scary and I was mean mugging or I had a mean mug face. So I was like, what? I look scary. Wow. Okay. Because usually I, th- I think that I always smile, but that was actually funny to hear. Um, but no, it was, I just remember this one day me and Nia just connected. Like we just talked about everything. It was very comfortable talking to each other about it. And after that, it was just boom. Like a friendship was was built right there. Over time, you know, you got to hang out with each other. Just what have you enjoyed most about that uh, friendship and all the other friendships you had a chance to build on those Michigan State teams? Um. Okay, so freshman year was pretty difficult just because I didn't really fit in. I felt like I felt like the black sheep. So when Nia came along with my other friend named Kiara, she graduated a year after me or before me. Um, we all just became the the three. Like we all we were all we had. And um, you know, those are still gonna be my friends till after college, years after. And um I don't know, like we, we just all of my friends I have now, like we just take friendship seriously. It's one of those like you, more than a friend you're you're in my family just because like it'll be okay for you to come over without asking is one of those type of relationships so um yeah that's that's really how I view friendship and that's all of my friends now and how did you feel you grew as a as an athlete and as a human being in your five years at Michigan State <laughs> Um, like I said before, I was not positive at all. I was actually very negative. Um, it took me a very long time and a lot of self-reflecting and a lot of tears, a lot of lot. (laughs) And, um, you know, after years, you just start to grow. You start to talk to people more and being okay with being uncomfortable. Um, So, yeah, I just grew as a person and my mindset changed. And once my mindset changed, it seemed like everything started to change. And on a related note, you mentioned how proud or how uh, admired you were that Michigan State, the first school to make you an offer, stuck with you in spite of all your hardships. So over the years, getting to receive the guidance from Susie Merchant, the, the instruction mm-hmm. and just the growth, you know, how do you think that helped shape you as a player and as a person uh, uh, you know, working with her for five years? Yeah, well, like I said, loyalty is really big for me. And by Michigan State, staying there even after my injuries, it showed great loyalty to me. And Susie, she's, she's loyal, like she, you know, she can come off mean and everything on TV or whatever. And, of course, you know, you're going to get the days where she yells at you. But at the end of the day, she just wants you to be a better individual 
And, um, you know, it took me a long time to, you know, think it in that way. But once I grew as a person and actually started to build a connection with her, um, it, it came down to loyalty. And that's, that's what it is. Now, if my memory is right, you got to play in a few NCAA tournaments. And, you know, remember this past season, one of your wins came against Notre Dame, uh, which was kind of interesting at, because that turned out to be Muffet McGraw's last season. But, mm-hmm. you know, you got a chance to take part in some, you know, tournaments Thank and some you. other things. So any uh, moments or memories that you really enjoyed that you were proud to experience as a Michigan State player? Um, well, my freshman year was just getting to the tournament period. That was crazy. And I, I had the chance to, even though I redshirt, I had the chance to um, still travel with the team. So I, I, <laughs> I got to feel the environment and the atmosphere. And it was, that was the year it was supposed to be played in Michigan State. But since they had the finals for high school in Michigan State, we had to go to um, Mississippi State. I think that's what it was, yeah. And it was – that was a crazy game. So, after that, it was just like, a wow, this is what I have to play in. And then I remember playing against Oregon. That was a crazy game. I don't want to talk about. Um, and then we beat them our junior year – or my junior year. We beat them at home. Oregon? That was – yeah. I remember that, that. Was yes. The game. I remember- that was the game. That was the game. I remember that. Uh, yeah, that, I think you had a couple of big wins that season. And you know, how yeah. many folks can say we got to beat Sabrina Ionescu? <laughs> oh, man, that was uh, – even play against her, was that was – she's she's a great player. But that was a great game. So, of all the teams you got to face, you know, all the venues, all the places you got to visit, what would you say – was your favorite road or neutral site to play in and who was your favorite player or team to go against? That's a hard question. I have a lot of favorites. I'm not well, a favorite type of person. Well, you can list them all if you want. All right. <laughs> you can list them all. <laughs> I really like the, the, um, the tournament trips, you know, the resort, it was somewhere warm. Uh, love those. So Bahamas, Cancun. Cancun was really fun. Um, we went to Europe my sophomore, freshman year, whatever you want to say. Um, that was fun. Just like new experiences. Everything in college for me was a new experience. So everything was just new, especially my freshman and sophomore year. But my junior and senior year, was it was actually the tournaments at that point because I've seen all of the stadiums pretty much. That we played, so that's how we it. And then teams, players, who? Uh, oh, teams. Did you enjoy, yes, okay. who did you enjoy? Teams. <laughs> I and honestly, again, if you have ten favorites or a hundred, you can list them all if you want. Okay, so I, I'm the type of player that likes a lot of you know emotions in the game. I'm, I like to clap. I like to yell. You know, talk in the game. Um, so I like playing against teams that like to, to match that energy. And LSU was one of those teams. Um, Rutgers is one of those teams. But I like playing against Sabrina Ionescu just because she's such a great player that she made us better players. So I like those type of players. And, you know, everybody has – a lot of teams have those type of players, so I can't really choose an individual. But since we're talking about Oregon and she's – a very good player. It has to be Sabrina. And you were touching on this for a bit, but you said going in, you know, I think Oregon, were they number three in the country at the time? Yeah, they were number three. I or, believe. And they were on the short list of teams to watch. And, you know, I'm bummed that, well, she and everyone else didn't have a chance to play in that yeah. tournament. I think Oregon, it could have been their year, but can you t- take us through that game? You know, what you guys thought going in, you knew UNESCO um, and this yeah. Oregon team is going to challenge you and to <laughs> pull off a big win like that. It was, yeah, it was, 
our mindset it was on the same level that's what it seemed like it was everybody was sharp and focused and shoot around everybody had a feeling that you know what we are good enough to go against this team and everybody just had a good dream that night it seemed like about the game so um and we we came out there after we were down by 10 or 12 quick in the first quarter um you know everybody kind of got discouraged but Jenna one of the seniors at the time she really put the team on her back at that moment so I yeah I remember waking up trying to snap out of it but I just couldn't I don't know why so that's how I felt individually but as a team wise everybody just felt calm and collective after that one timeout I'm pulling up the box score from that game now Oh gosh. <laughs> on this other monitor just to see yeah it it was a it was a fight all the way through but yeah that second quarter I think was the big one where you got some separation mm -hmm. so as the game's moving along and you know you get closer and closer and then when it hits you that you're going to pull off this big win in front of a national tv audience I remember the game was on ESPN too now and mm -hmm. just how exciting Oh was that gosh. moment for you and the rest of that team? It was amazing. I just remember being on the being on the sideline, just like clapping and screaming. And then once the clock ran out, we just all ran to the, to you know kind of where half court was just to meet as a team. And then we did our um you know the fight song or um what is it called alma mater song at the end of the game and I remember seeing our scout boys and the managers where the benches are and we just all ran over there right after um right after the song was over and it was just a uh, great atmosphere great yeah and that year you know, I mean, you went 21 and 12, but you know that was the first of several ranked wins. I remember that same season you beat Iowa, you beat Maryland, a team that had been a thorn for you and just about everyone else in the Big Ten. So mm -hmm. that had to have been, I have to presume, <laughs> one of your most fun seasons, even if you didn't win every game, because the wins you did get uh, were some high quality ones. Um, yeah, it was a lot of uh, a lot of ups and downs that year. Um... You know, it was literally a roller coaster. That's what it was. So, you know, it was fun while it was up, and then when it was down, it was kind of scary. <laughs> well, and I think it just speaks to the parity we've seen in this sport over the last few years, because when UConn and Brianna Stewart had that run of four in a row, oh. it was one-sided, and it was fun to watch, and at the same time, you know, it it, it can be tough to watch and, you know, hard to get maybe some casual fans involved because you know, the mindset is if you know a team's going to win, all right, well, some folks will take it for granted. But mm -hmm. after that, what we've seen the last several years where it's hard to pick a favorite because yeah, no one, nobody seems to be pulling ahead. And so I think it's, it just makes every week insane because there's always going to be an upset and, you know, for at least one night, uh, you were living proof of that in that win yeah. over Oregon. I agree, especially this year. That's how I feel, just because every team was up and down, up and down. And that's why I was so bummed for um, the tournament to be canceled. Uh, just because I didn't know who was going to win. I was so interested to see. Um, so, yeah, I agree. <laughs> right, yeah. And, you know, who would have been the upset darlings? I think South Dakota State got to the Sweet 16, Buffalo. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we were seeing more and more of that, you know, after years of kind of chalk reigning supreme, if you will. But, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's next year or down the road, you know, we'll get to see it play out again in future tournaments. Um, you were featured earlier this season from Michigan State's in-house all-access department. And you mentioned – how your knee injuries had to help you or helped you grow up more quickly. How difficult was it knowing that your last season ended prematurely? You know, certainly don't want it to end the way it did. And how do you think those injuries, not to make light of it, helped you 
with perseverance because as you've said, you've developed a lot of positive vibes over the years. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I don't know where to start just because it's a long story. Um, you know, I got my injury, my first injury when I was in high school. My freshman year, you know, I was 14 at the time. So it was all new to me. I thought I was going to get back in the game, actually. I didn't know I tore my ACL. I never heard of an ACL. Everything was so new to me. So um, I don't really know if I would say it limited me to by hurting myself. I felt, you know, all sad. I didn't know what to do I was young like I was asking God like why why are you doing this to me I was questioning him and you know everything wasn't clicking and it was a lot of ups and downs for me and um you know it kind of affected me in a way but it also taught me how to look at the game differently I gained more IQ and I started thinking that like that after, you know, talking to my parents about it and they're trying to put more positivity in my ears. Um, and even with my, um, my therapist at the time that was rehabbing my knee and I still talk to them to this day just because they're my mentors in a way. Um, so I was just, you know, I was just so used to being injured that I finally came to terms with it. Like, you know what? Okay. It's a reason why I keep getting injured. I need to stop questioning God and look more deeper to the root of why this is happening. It's for a reason. So um, that's when I started becoming more of a listener, I would say, and observer and a helper for my team. Like, that's when I started to say, okay, they don't need me to score anymore. Like, I can focus on something else. Um, so just like, hurting myself, I, I help work on other parts of my game. Um, so, like, I just look at it in a positive way and, like, all of the things that happened to me prior to getting my knee hurt for the last time, it was like a, okay, this is the final straw. God is telling me something, which I thought it was like, okay, basketball, you need to you need to focus on something else right now. Um, so if I had that mindset, if I didn't have the mindset I have now that I had my freshman year instead, I would be devastated. I you know, I would I wouldn't be able to function. Um, but since I grew as a player throughout my years and um I grew more positive and after I got the news, I just remember a snap going into my head and I was just up like okay how can I fix make this into a positive and you know that that's when I became more of a mentor for my teammates and what did you learn from that experience because you I think yeah lost the last two months of the season when mm -hmm. you suffered the last of your knee injuries uh, so you had a few games to get accustomed to it what did you learn most about being a mentor to your teammates who are still able to get out there and play? And mm -hmm. what did you gain uh, from that experience? Um, I'm, I gained respect, first and foremost, respect, loyalty. Um, and just like me as a person, I, I'm a giver. I even have a tattoo that says to give. So, um, you know, just giving my knowledge to other players, why hold it in? Like, I, I can't play anymore, that's how I think. Like, why hold it in? I, if I see them doing something that didn't work out for me, I'll tell them my story just in case they they don't know what to expect, if that makes sense. Um, so just being a mentor and giving them advice and being a listener to them is something that I really crave just because I felt like nobody really gave that to me. and I would I would have wanted somebody to be there for me how I am how I'm trying to be there for other people. What did you enjoy most about being a college basketball player? Uh, 
all the adventures. I love adventures. I would, I, I just love adventures. I would go on the road and listen to music if I could at any time of the hour, but I can't because I'm, I like sleeping. So, <laughs> um, I don't know, just, just that. Any other interactions with teammates? You've touched on this a little bit, just other moments, memories you were glad you got to be a part of with your Michigan mm -hmm. State brethren? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I became really close to the freshmen th this year because it was a whole bunch of them. And it reminded me of my class. It, it was six of us. Two people, me and the other girl ended up redshirting. Three people left, and then it was Jenna. So Jenna was the only person in our class left that actually, like, did the four years. Um, I was here for five, and so I was the last one. And I knew how I felt coming in with all those people, and I didn't want any of the freshmen to feel like that. So I tried to um, pay attention more to the freshmen. And um, I started to gain more, I wouldn't say gain, but build more friendships with the five, the post players, just because I was the only senior as a post player. And this is my new position too. And this is their new, this is their first year, which is Sydney Dodd and um, Tyre Parks. And even Kayla Bellis at a, at a um, so um, we built, built the bond. And after that, it was, I don't know. I just tried to do the best I could, to be honest. That's all I could say to be there for my teammates. Now, there's something I wanted to touch on. Uh, if I'm reading your hat correctly, I think you're the biggest SpongeBob SquarePants fan that That's I have known. Right. And SpongeBob and a teddy bear, I don't know if that is a reference to anything or? <laughs> um, my best friend got me this hat for my birthday. Um, I don't, I think it's the teddy bear is the actual hat brand and it was just a special feature, but yeah, I just love SpongeBob. I don't really remember how my love for SpongeBob started, but I just remember my cousin, my little cousin having a SpongeBob room and I would just always be in there watching SpongeBob. And after that, I just started in middle school, just loving SpongeBob, anything SpongeBob. I had a backpack of SpongeBob. It was pretty cool. I don't know where that is. Though. So I have to imagine for you, it's amusing to see that and especially that show take off with all the memes. So, you know, when I got my head out was a thing and still is, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like I probably, have a shirt. You probably <laughs> remember the episode where, where it happened. <laughs> yeah. I honestly I have to look it up because I don't even know what episode that is until I watch it. But, um, I have a shirt of that meme and it just cracks me up every Spongebob meme just because it's hilarious. I don't, I don't know. It's hilarious. And that's another way how me and Nia connected just because we love Spongebob too. But, um, that's my show. If, if there's anything <laughs> unusual or surprising that folks may not know about you, that is fun to um, share. Yeah. I have two cats now instead of just one. I added to my family. Um, and he he knows how to play fetch. So he's really a dog. Kind of throws me off a little bit. But hey. Um, and I love movies. I would watch movies over TV shows. And I need more movies. But I'm always the person to, I need a good vibe every time. So that's why I keep repeating the same movies. Um, but yeah, I could, I could see myself being a movie critic. That's how much I love movies. So what movies do you like to put on repeat? Um, I like the SpongeBob movie, of course. I love Shrek. That's hilarious. White Chicks. Um, I honestly, yeah. And I like Now You See Me. I like movies that stimulate my mind, if that makes sense. And that's just funny. But also, I'm going to watch any movie that you put on. When you said movies that stimulate your your mind, and it's just it, and I say it because it's interesting how our interpretations vary. And I 
find it cool, but mm. like some of mine were Inception, which is not a film you want to watch halfway oh through. Gosh. Jurassic Park you sound is like Nia. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I, I sound like Nia, but with much less hair. <laughs> I jokingly call myself the, the John Luke Picard, like a young, if, a young John Luke Picard from Star Trek. I grew up on that, so yeah, I, I'm not afraid to say it was a nerd growing up. Right. Pe people wonder how I got into sports, and it's like I don't know, but I found it fun. But I like sci-fi movies. I was gonna say Inception, uh, Jurassic Park. That movie I can quote verbatim, and that's some that's a movie you really appreciate more as an adult um, when you understand the themes behind it. I'm a huge MCU fan, so every new release, it's just I'm just telling Marvel, shut up and take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I grew up on all those. That's my, I don't know. I'm different in movies just because my parents are like that. So it's pretty cool. Well, we might have to have, um, next time we meet, a movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to... Nobody can beat our coach, Dean. He's seen every movie possible. This answer could change in a month or a year from now, but you know, where do you see yourself in the next phase of your career with Ooh, the knowledge that you don't have to go to practice anymore or go to those 6 a.m. workouts? Um, okay, so I, I prepared this question for a long time because <laughs> I got this question so many times. I'm just going to say I'm I, – getting I'm in the path of finding my passion and what I like to do as an individual outside of basketball and that is to give and help people for one and I like being around the youth so that's just my focus right now and you know I'm good at listening I'm good at giving advice so I could also see myself as a like a guidance counselor or a mentor in a way so with those characteristics of me um, you know, wherever that is, I'm, I'm just going to start with those characteristics. And academically, I imagine you got your bachelor's or you finished up your, your undergrad studies and came back for a fifth year. So where are you at? And um, uh, yeah. yeah, just tell us. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> so, so you, yeah, you listed all your accomplishments in athletics, and so I imagine there's a few <laughs> academic uh, items on that checklist. Yeah. So yeah, I graduated with a kinesiology major last year, and then this year I just completed my first year of grad school in the program of sports coaching and leadership. So I'm learning how to be a coach, even more in depth than I get to know that side. And you know, it's very interesting because I know that side and, you know, um, I get to see, I get to analyze a lot more. And once I got hurt, since that, um, I got to observe every individual in the gym and, you know, it helped me gain more knowledge in my courses and, uh, for my program. And for future athletes, we don't know what this world is going to look like or when we'll be able to play again, but yeah. We will return to sports at some point. You know, this current phase of quarantine is temporary. Mm -hmm. So whether it's next season or next year, who knows what the landscape will look like. But what advice would you give, I guess, in a sense, if you could meet with a younger version of yourself, which you, know, you mentioned your freshman and all these other up-and-comers are going to experience in high school and college, mm -hmm what kind of mentorship would you offer them? Um, honestly, you can, whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. Don't belittle yourself. Don't let anybody control you and make decisions for you. Um, and don't think you're, you, you can't be perfect. I was always a perfectionist. So it's, it's impossible to be perfect. So be okay with making mistakes. Just learn from them. Um, and like I said, loyalty is key. That's it. Um, those are the only things that I can really say. I think you should add another one to that list and just tell future prospects, it's okay if your career high is 25 points. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Make sure you bring something else to your game besides scoring. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I'm glad you brought that up because I was 
reading something from a college coach and they're not going to sink a lot any specific recruit but they said with all these highlight reels and when they watch full games you know they say we're looking at the full package we don't care about the double doubles or the points we want to see you know how you handle being the ball handler what do you do when you're not getting touches all of that so what you're saying fits right into that <laughs> yeah pretty much I'm, I'm that type of coach yeah for sure Wherever you end up, what are you looking forward to most uh, um, in the real would, world, as they say? Um, just making a change. Um, I want to just making a change anywhere I go, making a positive change within if that's in the community community or uh, talking to individuals, being being there for somebody else and making a change in a positive way. That is Victoria Coco Gaines, who just finished up her career at Michigan State, and I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot about her wherever she ends up in her career. And if you want to be a guest for a future episode of Mike Up Sports, whether that's in person or virtual, just hit us up at tsbtelevision at gmail.com. And as you saw with this and all of our shows, nothing's off the table. Uh, sports is the focus, but we'll chat about almost anything. So once again, Coco, thanks for stopping by and thank you for watching another thank episode you. of Mike Jump Sports. You, Mike. Thank you so much.